This is the best day of my life. episode of the first season of Taskmaster Australia. I'm Tom Gleeson and everything I have done in my storied career has led to this. For now, I am no longer just Tom Gleeson, I am the Taskmaster! <laughs> For ten weeks, five comedians hand-selected by me will put their brains, bodies and whatever they have left of their reputations on the line <laughs> as they compete to take home the most valuable prize in Australian television history, this golden replica of my stunning head. Let's meet the brave contestants vying for the prize. Our season one cast are Danielle Walker, Jimmy Reese, Julia Morris, Luke McGregor, and Mina Riyama. These five comedians have each given up days of their precious lives to complete a series of tasks set by me at our highly secretive Taskmaster retreat. Unfortunately for them, we filmed everything they did with high-definition cameras, <laughs> and I'm going to spend the next ten weeks ranking them from best to worst. Oh, and there's someone else I need to introduce. Um, sitting next to me on a significantly smaller and appropriate chair <laughs> is a man whose value will become more apparent, hopefully, as the show goes on. <laughs> It's my assistant, Tom Cashman. Good on. <laughs> Tom Cashman has been my eyes and ears on the ground during the filming of the task, and also my hands and legs. I promise I didn't do anything weird with your eyes or ears. Or legs. The hands, well... <laughs> Let's just say there are a few slip-ups. But I will be providing facts and figures uh, throughout the show. For example, yeah. about, like, 90% of me regrets saying that thing about my hands just then. <laughs> Shall we get stuck into our first task? Yes. Our first task is a prize task. So each of our contestants have been asked to bring in a prize or an offering. The one that fits the brief the best will receive five points, the second best, four points, and so on. And the winner of tonight's episode will take home all five prizes. So what's the prize task tonight, Tom? Tonight our contestants have been asked to bring in what they consider to be the most beautiful thing. All right, I think we all know the most beautiful thing is a 15-cent reusable Coles bag blowing in the wind. <laughs> but maybe this lot can top that. Danielle, what have you brought? It's a couture gown based off a country item, a fishing shirt that I've made it. This is... <laughs> I've added a corset back and I've covered it in bedazzles. I don't... <laughs> I feel like you're dressed there for the red carpet at the Country Music Awards in Tamworth. Oh, if I win it back, I'm wearing it to the Logies. <laughs> so, Jimmy, what, what have you brought for me? I thought a beautiful thing I saw on Twitter, actually. It's just a composition of words that I think is, is quite beautiful. OK. Poetic? Yeah. If, if, you won, you'll see. <laughs> um, oh, my God, this is fantastic. My preference was for Kitty Flanagan to be the Taskmaster, but Tom is absolutely an easy pick. <laughs> To be fair, Kitty Flanagan would have been a great taskmaster, but this is Australian television and I'm a white man, so I get to host. <laughs> That's how it works. <laughs> I thought I had more retweets than that, but... Right, well, the one comment was me just saying, beautiful. <laughs> Julia, what do you bring? One of my real happy places is a morning coffee. I had a mug made for myself and that is the beautiful thing that I've brought in and it's what I like to call the taskmaster in his dorm room at school coffee mug. <laughs> Where did that photo come from? I'm not that... telling you. No names, no court cases. <laughs> well, Julia, I, I really like it because now I know what colour Tom's hair was. Yeah. <laughs> Luke, what'd you bring? Well, uh, you and I both, we love the sun. <laughs> we, but it, we're limited to when it's below uh, UV level three. Um, 
<laughs> so uh, I, I brought in the, 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 the sunset. No, sorry, sunrise. Uh, well, both. <laughs> I brought in both, but because I couldn't bring in either, um, <laughs> I, I, I brought in uh, this, um, so, so we don't miss it. <laughs> Hang on. Did you say sunrise or sunset? Well, I brought... Well, you can use... You can go for both. You just put it in the... <laughs> you just set the alarm and you, you can... You have to set the alarm for the sunset. <laughs> what, are you worried about having a really, really decent nap? <laughs> well, if, you, if, you, if, you're bit, well, if you're busy, it's, um... You get, you get an alarm clock. <laughs> <laughs> but we've got one of those in our phone. You brought in something that we already have. <laughs> you actually... I'm not sure you brought anything, really, if you think about it. I, I think I'm going to mark you down harshly. Oh. Or, 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 hear me out, you don't do that. <laughs> okay, Nina. I brought in a cigarette butt from the gutter. <laughs> That's got a lipstick stain on it. Lipsticks are such a motif for, like, elegance and beauty and, like, class, and then, like, a cigarette is the opposite of that and it kills you. So... <laughs> yeah, like, I think so the, the sunset, not too bad anymore, right? <laughs> I feel like the only thing it represents is just a woman who's made a poor health choice. <laughs> First of all, I think Luke's at the bottom because he brought us nothing. He, uh, <laughs> well, I mean, a sunset, they are beautiful things, but you didn't actually bring them. Just to bring the sun in would have been a logistical nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so Luke's on one. Nina's... I, I understand the poetry behind it, but really it's just a woman who made a poor health choice, so Nina's on two. Julia's reminded me of my traumatic past, so that's a three. <laughs> Uh, to be fair, Kitty Flanagan would have been a better taskmaster, so <laughs> Jimmy's on four and Danielle's going to look so great at the Logies. <laughs> she can have the win on five. <laughs> All right, shall we get into the good gear, Tom Cashman? I still get shivers when you say my name. <laughs> Let's do it. It's time for our first pre-filmed task of the season, which is cause for celebration, a very restrained celebration. <laughs> Hi, Julia. I'm coming. <laughs> Come on, buddy. Hi, Daniel. It's in the letterbox. The flag's up. Ah. Oh, message received. Hmm? <laughs> <laughs> Stand by. I didn't know that that's what that meant. Remove the balloon from inside the caravan. You may not touch or step into the caravan. Fastest wins. Your time starts now. Where is it? Now. Oh, all right. Oh, oh that is in there. <laughs> So, relatively simple stuff here. We've got a balloon in a caravan and our contestants have to remove the balloon without stepping into the caravan or touching it. Fastest wins. <laughs> OK, well, let's get stuck in, shall we? One's blown up on social media, the other doesn't mind a puff. Here's Jimmy and Julia. <laughs> <laughs> you may not touch or step into the caravan. You can't step in there, you've just got to get it out. I feel like I need a gun. All right, I just want to survey the area, Tom. <gasps> Yes! No, not up there. All right, I'm wasting time. I can feel it in my lady's waters. <laughs> <laughs> um. I think I've got an idea. OK. in here, so I'm not touching. Oh, oh, OK, Tom, you're still not touching, I don't think. Go this way. It's going to bounce off the... Come this way. Come on. That was a nice basket, too. Um, OK. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Just using what is available to me at this current point. <laughs> here we go. Bounce.
I must say, I'm not sure what was more exhausting, watching you blow that much <laughs> or watching Julia sit on a basket. Um, I really had no idea what I was doing. I, you know, I was just happy to be away from home. <laughs> For a second when I was watching you in the middle of the task, I thought the task was polishing the floor with your ass. Well, I mean, 75 years in the business, Tom, let's face it. <laughs> Still got a job. Now, I feel like popping the balloon was disappointing. But it did just say you had to get the balloon out, didn't there was, it? There was nothing in the rules that said you couldn't pop the balloon. Mm. I feel like I want to mark you down for that. But why? I got the balloon out of the thing. It was just disappointing. Every, it, the crowd went, oh. <laughs> and I thought, I just go with the crowd. I'm an entertainer. <laughs> Wait! And then I picked up the remains of the balloon and they all went, oh! <laughs> You're leaving out half the story, Tom. No, I, I don't remember that bit. <laughs> Jimmy took four minutes and 18 seconds to remove the balloon from the caravan. Julia took seven minutes and 26 <laughs> seconds. All right. Who's next, Tom? Well, having been children more recently helped them, it's our two youngest contestants, Danielle and Nina. Can you go inside and open a window? Yeah. That would be good, maybe. Yeah. OK, thank you. Thank you. I'll be back. I need some things. Change of plans or... I'm going to get both, like, just in case, like, J-I-C. J-I-C? J-I-C, just in case. Oh, I thought you had an idea of what Jesus' middle name was. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Maybe it's my middle name, which is Isabel. Jesus Isabel Christ. <laughs> that has a nice ring to it. Totally. Beautiful. I should run. This is a fast time. I need to run. OK, so I can't go in the caravan, but I can do something like this. All right, OK. Them like little chopsticks. Oh, 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 we have an action. Oh, oh, oh my god, oh my god. Nope. Ah. No. No. Oh. Ah. This balloon's flirting with me. Oh, ah, okay, okay. Okay. It's like big um, salad tongs right now. Sure. Oh. <laughs> hey, bro. One balloon. Nina, I really wish the audience saw the look on your face when Danielle put tape on her oar. <laughs> I saw the look on your face. It was a look of regret. It was. It was a nice moment for me, too, because uh, I talk in a way that makes people think I'm dumb, but then that really proved that <laughs> there's something going on. I also talk in a way that thinks I'm... That, that, no. There it is. Thank you so much, Nina, for proving that point. So, um, how are you scoring them? Danielle, with her sticky or method, took five minutes and 18 seconds. What the hell? Nina's salad tongs method took three minutes and 18 seconds. Who's that? Much like balloons, certain children are scared of him. It's Luke McGregor. You may not touch it or step into the caravan, so I can't step into the caravan. Didn't say I can't go into the caravan. You reckon that's gonna pass? Did you touch the caravan? Oh, shit. <laughs> I, I, did, I did touch the caravan. I forgot about that. Ooh. Well, I'm taking the balloon. Luke, did you know that we were filming this? I had a hunch based on the 20 members of crew around us. <laughs> Yeah, I feel like you're very good at lateral thinking if you don't follow the rules. Because <laughs> you fixated on that one thing. I was so excited. It's like, don't step into the lava. Well, I can jump into it and then it's, you're, it's, it's still lava and you, and you die. <laughs> My favourite part of it was the eye contact you maintained with me <laughs> as you proudly slid back. <laughs> so that's a pretty easy disqualification. It's very, well, it's very early on in the series, but I feel like we need to establish that rules are rules. So, who won? Well, I mean, if you're going to be a stickler for rules... Oh, no. I feel like there's some more footage that maybe you should see. Oh. Oh, no. You may not touch the caravan or step into it. 
Is that right? That's well, what it says. You may not touch it. Is that open? Oh, what's this? I was going to do a roll in. Oh, OK. Because it's not stepping in, is it? Is it touching? Does it open? Does it open? Oh, it's open. Get open! Is that not a step? <laughs> no, not that way! <laughs> no! All my dreams have come true. We are opening the whole series with a mass disqualification <laughs> event. This is great! I thought we'd have to wait weeks for this. Jimmy touched the caravan 25 times. <laughs> Julia touched it four times and stepped into it once. So our scores are Julia, Jimmy and Luke have been disqualified. Yes. Danielle is on four points and the winner of this task is Nina Oyama with five points. So, the winner thus far, Danielle on nine points. What do you reckon? Shall we do another one? We've got like 30 more of these to go, so I think, yeah. <laughs> Let's watch our contestants put their lives on the line. Hey, man. Hey, Nina. Wow, wow, wow. Whoa. Oh, there's you. Oh, look at that. In Paris and as a baby. It's my history. Getting married. So. You should be proud of yourself. Thank you. You can die having lived a full life. Let's not go that far. No? <laughs> OK, create a minute-long montage of your life. The best looking life wins. Best looking. That's in the bag. You have 45 minutes. Your time starts now. Let's start with my birth. I'll be back. So our contestants had 45 minutes to film all the scenes to make up the story of their lives, and all creative decisions were made by our contestants. OK, was that wise? I'm not sure. OK. <laughs> Who's first? Let's take a dive into the twisted mind of Danielle Walker. Hi, that's me, Danielle. My mum knew she was going to call me Danielle for forever. She went to a psychic who said, you're going to call your daughter Danielle. Also, she will be known the world over. My favourite movie when I was a kid was Andre the Seal. We recorded it onto VCR, but it was recorded second after a report on 60 Minutes about a man getting killed and I didn't know how to use fast forward, so I'd have to watch that first. I was eight years old when my granddad taught me how to drive. A bush rat. Yeah? You know you can eat that. Oh. We check the pig traps every day for feral pigs. <laughs> feral pigs are a real scourge on this country. <laughs> <laughs> they need to be eradicated. They're destroying Australia's flora and fauna. Granddad, shoot! Granddad! Granddad! Me and my granddad love drinking together. <laughs> Me and granddad would feed rainbow popcorn to the rainbow fish so that they'd get their beautiful colours. <laughs> That's me with Quinton Bryce, ex-Governor General of Australia. She's giving me my BP Scout medallion, the highest accolade you can get in Scouts. And yes, we shake hands with the opposite hand in Scouts. OK. I woke up on my 410th birthday and saw the light. I walked into it. Now I'm in heaven. Scouts was a highlight. If that was a highlight to your life, I'm worried you've had a bit of a shit life. I loved Scouts because it was fun and I got to... I was a PL. What's a PL? Uh, it's a patrol leader. Oh. Yeah. You work your way up the ranks. You start off scum, then you go... Is that one of the rankings? Scum? Yeah, scum. <laughs> really? Do you get a scum badge? You don't even get to wear a badge. <laughs> you don't even get a uniform. Are you sure this was Scouts? Well, Mum took me somewhere on a Wednesday night, so... <laughs> <laughs> I feel like you got a bit political in the middle of your film there too. You worked in your woke, anti-feral pig agenda. <laughs> what was that oh, about? Oh, sorry, is that woke, is it? To not want the bandicoots to die out? Danielle's uh, not wrong. In 2021, it was estimated that Queensland had up to 2.3 million feral pigs. OK, so you mixed a few facts in there with your short film. <laughs> I'm big into facts and I'm not big into feral pigs. That's... <laughs> OK, well, the boundaries have been laid. Who's up next? 
from the twisted mind of Jimmy Reese. Here's Jimmy Reese. Oh, he looks handsome. Me? Oh, we had a baby. Hey. Let's call him Toby. No, not Toby. We'll call him James. I don't want to ride on the motorbike. It's your first day of school, Jimmy. Ready to go, Mum. The school captain will be... Me? See. That was fun finishing school. What am I going to do now? Come and see me, Jimmy. OK, for like one year? Sure, whatever. I'd like to be on TV. Want to come and hang with me? Only if I can wear pyjamas 24-7. Yeah, you got it, man. Oh, that guy looks cute. What, me? You may kiss the bride. Hi. Oh, you won't be needing that. Not to me, Jimmy. She's so proud. We should have another one. Cut it, Jimmy. Twins? Oh, amazing. <laughs> Ooh, my life is crazy. You're on Taskmaster, Jimmy. Oh, wh what do I do? Oh, thanks, Tom. Um, uh, just read it. Yep, okay. <laughs> Create a minute long montage of your life. Best looking life wins. You have 45 minutes. Your time starts now. I feel, Jimmy, that that was like one of your TikTok videos, except a bit more brief. <laughs> and also, the camera work was less shit. <laughs> but it'll be seen by less people because it's on broadcast TV. It's very true. <laughs> but if I post that, it won't. Or are you just going to get someone to send you the video yeah, file and then just upload it? Because I didn't have to edit it. It was easier. Can you post mine? I'd love to get the word out about feral pigs. <laughs> <laughs> Who shall we look at next? Here's one from the twisted mind of Julia Morris. All right, I'm movie. Here we go. You're going to choose some photos? Yeah. I mean, you can't believe how hot I thought I was there. I think I have a disease called reverse body dysmorphia where I just think I look really hot all the time. Right. Here we go. Get in there. It's got no music on it, but do you want me to sing? <laughs> Thanks, Julia. Yeah, that's my real pleasure, sir. So desperate for validation. I know it's pathetic, but I can't change it now at nearly 55. Is that a montage? I feel like it was more of a slideshow. Oh, well, yeah, I guess. One thing I will say is I do feel like you captured the three stages of life. Childhood, adolescence and being a celebrity, meeting other celebrities. <laughs> Which is something that we all go through, isn't it? Absolutely. Yeah. And also, it's not like I know her. I'm standing next to her in a photo and then we both go our separate ways. That's what always gets me about celebrity photos. They're so ridiculous. You're like, here's us standing beside each other. And then we weren't. That's right. <laughs> Are we going to hang out after this, Julia? Never! No. <laughs> it's Why never going to happen. I would love it, but I just know. And also, it's because only one of us is a celebrity. Um, <laughs> I'm ready for more montages. They call her the pretzel because her mind is so goddamn twisted. It's <laughs> Nina Oyama. Well, you, you brought something new in with the titles. Oh, thank you. And, and the black and white. Yeah, which was great. I also liked it when you held a press conference to announce that you'd read a book. 
Is that what the point of that press conference was? Or? Yeah, because I don't sound or look like I read books and so I wanted to, everyone to be proud of me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm feeling like I have to mark you down though because I think, wasn't the task yet to make a montage of your life? Create a minute long montage of your life. Best looking life wins, you have 45 minutes, your time starts now. Of your life. Interpret that how you will. I, I, I know how I'm going to interpret it. <laughs> I'm going to interpret it for maximum damage. We have one more montage to go and it... Oh. Oh, it says, says this guy's just got a normal mind. <laughs> Nothing twisted about it. It's Luke McGregor. Push. Push, Mrs McGregor. <laughs> I'll name him Luke after Luke Skywalker. Cool. Luke, I'm the mayor and I need you to jump this lake to save the town. You got it, Mr Mayor. I support gay marriage. Thank you. I am the king of Tasmania and I hereby knight you I'm for protecting... I'm a teenager as well. I'm the youngest knight. Youngest knight ever. Nevertheless, you protected our realm for, and you're the best. Here is the knighting. Thank you. Thank you, king. I'll, I can't wait to tell all my girlfriends. How many do you have? It's none of your business. OK. Have I done it? You've cured cancer. Oh, great. We gather here today to remember the life of Luke McGregor, who died winning the sex grand final. <laughs> so, Luke, did all these things happen in your life? I tried to stick to the facts. <laughs> oh, great. Well, I won't mark you down. <laughs> So tell us what happened in the sex grand final. Um, well, I died, but... It's a bit of a blur, to be honest. Um, but um, Tom was there. I'm... That's okay. not true. <laughs> I've never even made it out of the sex round of 16. <laughs> so I feel like I should give some scores. I've got to say, Julia, you're at the bottom on one because I feel like it was a slideshow and that was a disappointment. Fair enough, but... So you're at the bottom on one. OK. Fine. Nina's was completely made up. You weren't an astronaut. That wasn't actually your life, so that's two. <laughs> Jimmy, I feel like it's a very good clip, but you don't need points because you're going to get, like, sponsored content or some shit on Instagram, I don't understand. And then Danielle for raising awareness of the feral pig problem in Queensland. That's something that needs to be talked about more often. So four points to Danielle. It's true. And for Luke McGregor's factual life, <laughs> that was very entertaining, I'm giving him five points. <laughs> do we have another task to watch? We do, and this one is juicy, baby. <laughs> Hey, buddy. Hi, Luke. Oh, oh, there's a lot of things here. Hmm, quite a collection. <laughs> you have recorded before, and I record again. You know what else I do? Oh, sh <laughs> <clears throat> Yeah. Careful. Yeah. It's hard to guess what the task is going to be, so I'll just read it. OK, dear Lord. Fill the glass with orange juice. You may only touch oranges with the items on the bench. Fastest wins. Your time starts now. So they're only allowed to touch the oranges with an egg beater, a keyboard, a toothbrush, a dumbbell, a recorder and a crock. No different from how they do it at Boost Juice. Uh, who's, <laughs> who's up first? These three all follow me on Instagram. It's Nina, Luke and Jimmy. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, oh, my God. One. <laughs> <laughs> The first blast is the best blast, as they say. The first blast is the best blast. Yep, couple more. Look at that, that's working. Send me the glass. There's gotta be something better we can be doing. I've made 
made the floor slippery, Tom. Can you just remind me that when I do that next time? How much is full? It just needs to be at least 50% because that can be a glass half full. It can also be a glass half empty. It has to be 51%. I don't think the saying is a glass half full, that's a full glass. <laughs> Hey, can you also remind me to just be less aggressive with the weight when I go to squash an orange next? This will double our output. Uh... What? Oh, yeah! I'm almost there, I think. Oh, it comes out the side of the crock. You also reminded me that it comes out of the side of the crock next. Yeah. So that's three. <laughs> yeah! Oh, ah! Why is my aim getting worse? All right, Jimmy, be careful of the slipperiness. Thank you. And don't be too aggressive with the weight. Thank you. And also be mindful that the juice comes out of the side of the crock. And what do we say in showbiz? The first blast is the best blast. Oh, mate, you are an A-plus student. Mm. Ah, the keeper's not, the keeper's not working. I'm thinking maybe if I do this, and just oh. then brush it into the table. Oh. Oh. Couple more. Just catch it, gotta catch it now. Catch, yeah. catch, catch. Be mindful of the slipperiness. Are you going to type encouraging words on the keyboard or...? OK, if you want. Fantastic job. Thank you. Enter. Ooh. Received. Damn, I really squeezed the shit out of this one. That guy's never going to walk again. Oh, no, no, no! No! Am I disqualified? <laughs> no, the juice! No, I don't care. I'm going to... Nevertheless, she persisted. But I'm going to do one more orange, then I'm going to give up. Be careful being too aggressive with uh, the bike. Thank you. And don't slip. So, OK. Look at that. Is that it? Taskmaster, forgive Nina for touching the orange that one time. Are you finished? Cheers. Yes. One time? Sure. Careful, it's slippery. Thanks, Jimmy. No worries. <laughs> what percentage full do you think that is? It's more than half. 50 2%? Oh, boy. Nina, we have to talk. <laughs> you decided it was half full when it got to half the height. But the problem is, the glass has angles, so I suspect the top half has more volume than the bottom half. <laughs> that just sounds like maths or science. <laughs> Which I'm unfortunately not very good at, despite being half Asian. <laughs> I think I'm just going to have to trust you on this one. Well, you can trust me, because I did the maths. <laughs> Nina's glass was 49.4% full. <laughs> so Nina took 19 minutes and 29 seconds to fill the glass to 49.4%. <laughs> So if you do the maths and you extend that out and assume that you would have filled the glass at the same rate, your time comes to 39 minutes and one second. Mm. Oh, it's like times two. No. No. <laughs> it's approximately times two. <laughs> but uh, ma maybe you shouldn't approximate things from now on. <laughs> oh, this is tough. OK, now, Luke, you could have just actually taken the weight to the whole bucket of oranges right from the get-go. Yes. In fairness, I didn't think of that. <laughs> so, Jimmy, great use of the croc. So when you looked at that, did you just see a strainer? Is that what you're thinking? I have worn them before, and no, there was a lot of airflow through a croc, even though it makes your feet sweat profusely. <laughs> Can I say, I uh, only found out today that that croc was a used croc. Oh. I had a drink of Jimmy's, I had a drink of Luke's. <laughs> Both of them, the juice had gone through someone's foot stuff. OK. Well, that's interesting. So let's just back up again. And can you explain to us again, Jimmy, just how sweaty a croc can get after you wear them It can around. get really sweaty. In detail. Your feet take the brunt of the sweat, cos everything, like, gravity, like, all that goes down there... Into the crocs! This sounds like a great plot for a movie where wearing sweaty crocs are banned in a town called Foot Juice. Oh. <laughs> um, Nina, are you trying to lose more points? <laughs> Just outside the competition? Not intentionally. Luke took 17 minutes and 36 seconds to fill the glass with orange juice. Jimmy took 7 minutes and 41 seconds. OK. Whose sweet nectar shall we drink upon next, Tom? 
Oh, we must be tied 40-40 in a game of tennis because it's a juice with Daniel Walker. Fastest wins. Your time starts n now. <laughs> this is juicy oranges. I've just got to fill the glass that, to the top. That's the thing. All the information you need is in the task. Can you read it to me again? Fill the glass with orange juice. You may only touch oranges with the items on the bench. Fastest wins. Your time starts now. Fill the with orange juice. With touch. Okay. Far out. That that one's too tough. Oh, cut one more, one more, one more, one more juicy glass. Thanks, Daniel. Thank you. How do you think you went? I'm almost like pretty proud of that one. Hopefully that's. Surely that one's pretty good. So, I have to ask you, Danielle, what did you think all the objects on the table were for? I thought they were the only things you could use to help you if you wanted. <laughs> I was really proud of that one. Like, well, that one's gonna be good. <laughs> I know. <laughs> that was the joy of it. I've never seen someone look so proud of doing a shit job. I got them juiced so fast with my hands. It would I would have won if that was what the task was. Well, the time was good. <laughs> Two minutes and 55 seconds. Okay, so ignoring the rules is very effective. Okay, good to know. This woman's got the juice. It's Julia Morris. I feel like it doesn't say I have to use those oranges to fill the orange juice. Oh, <gasps> Tom! Wow! Oh, Tom! Tom! Go to the fridge! Oh, got orange juice? Yes. Okay. Still. It sounds like I've got a vibrato. Mm. But it's because I'm puffing from running. Oh, okay. Hey Tom, mm. this is what I look like when I'm when I'm dead. Oh. All right. Well, hopefully that doesn't happen very soon. Not today, Tom. Danielle, how did you feel watching Julia complete that task? Pretty pissed off. <laughs> I'd like to um, check the label to say, see if it's actually 100% orange juice. That's why I licked it and flicked it. How, we, how can you tell if it's 99.9% .9 orange juice uh, by licking it? The pulp, babe. <laughs> It was orange juice. Julia took one minute and 13 seconds. All right, Tom Cashman, final scores. So Danielle is a DQ, disqualified. Nina, I think we're giving her one point. Luke with three, Jimmy with four, and the winner of this task is Julia with five points. It is almost time for our final task, but before we do that, Tom, a score update, please. Leading at the moment is Danielle with 13 points. <laughs> All right, the stakes are high. Let's head up the stairs for a live task. <laughs> I see a lot of props, Tom. What's going on? Jimmy, could you please read the task? I can. It says, while standing beside your table. OK, I'm doing that. Throw a throw, boot a boot, bowl a bowl, flick a flick, <laughs> or propel a propeller. The closest to the edge of the stage. If your item goes over the edge, you are eliminated. Oh. If no item falls, the contestant furthest from the edge of the stage is eliminated. Once you have selected your item, you must throw, boot, bowl, flick, or propel. <laughs> On Tom's whistle. Oh. Repeat until the last player standing wins. <laughs> Please select an item. Oh, OK. Oh, God. Oh. I'm going to go hard up front. Three, two, one. Oh, no. <laughs> the bowl is 
the furthest from the edge of the stage. Luke McGregor is eliminated. Please select another item. Get down. Set. I don't think it's necessary for me to specify who lost that round. Please select an item. OK, stand by. Our live task saw Luke get one point, Nina two, Jimmy three, Danielle four, and Julia took home five points. Which means what in the total scheme of things, Tom? It means tonight's winner of the first ever episode of Taskmaster Australia is Danielle with 17 points. to you. A mug with my mug on it is coming your way, among other things. Get up on stage and claim what is rightfully yours. Yeah. And that was our first episode. We learned that Nina Ayama went to space, never came back, and somehow stayed here the whole time. And we learned that if you want to make some orange juice, you don't have to break a single orange. We learned that Luke McGregor doesn't know how to read. But most importantly, however, we've learned that Danielle is the winner of episode one of Taskmaster Australia. See you next week. For more Taskmaster, subscribe now.